Well, good afternoon uh, and good morning to those on the West Coast. I'd like you to welcome you to the Cybersecurity Collaborative uh, CISO's Guide to an Effective Security Metrics Program. We'd like to welcome both members and, and guests today. I'm Tom Skura, the Vice President of Content and Programs uh, for the Collaborative and today's moderator. Um, before I introduce my esteemed uh, panelists, just a couple of things to uh, note from a housekeeping standpoint. Uh, we don't have an open mic for questions, but we do allow a Q&A, and we're going to try to get to as many during uh, the discussion as possible, and, and certainly get to as many at, at the end as well. About 10 minutes, 10 minutes before the hour, um, uh, with the conclusion of this, there'll be a poll. We do ask you to take it. It helps us. It provides feedback for us. And and uh, and helps us uh, with these virtual briefings. I also want to note um, for those uh, members of the collaborative, the copy of the presentation will be in the members portal next week. Um, but for those who are guests at the end, there'll be a, an email. You can request a copy of the presentation and uh, we'll certainly uh, provide it to you. There's a lot of content here. We're gonna move over stuff. So I just want to um, state what you're going to see today is, is not a list of all the metrics and possible ways you can represent them. You're going to see kind of a, a, an organized presentation uh, around a framework. And what's most important that you're going to see the work of members uh, who have put metrics and metrics programs together and actually using them in the organization and sharing them amongst each other to try to improve each other's uh, programs. I think that's a, a, an important distinction here in terms of the way we're going. So the first person I'd like to introduce is our executive sponsor, Arlen McMillan, who's the chief security officer for an esteemed law firm in Chicago, Kirkland and Ellis LLP. Um, just briefly, Arlen is a major contributor to uh, the collaborative and a member of the executive committee who provides uh, guidance uh, to our task forces and uh, content and uh, all the activities of the collaborative. So Arlen, I'm going to, going to turn it over to you for a minute to introduce yourself and Kirkland and Ellis. Oh, I'm going to be super brief here and just say thank you for having me. Um, and uh, this really is a, a team effort. So let's get right to the team and talk about them. Okay. Mark, uh, you're the security operations manager for Illinois Toolworks. Uh, tell us a little bit about Illinois Tool. Yeah, so Illinois Toolworks is a global uh, industrial manufacturer. Um, we're not a household brand. We're very much a um, you know B two B two B brand. So we have a lot of uh, products and things that you know are sort of industrial in nature. Um, and uh, and we're also a very decentralized company. So when we are, are organize our security programs, it's uh, it's a, in a unique manner. So. Great, Mark. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Jeff, who's an associate director with Humana. Jeff. Yeah, it's been great being part of the collaborative. Uh, I lead up our metrics and reporting uh, program over at Humana. Our goal is really to protect our members' data. So large insurance company, we want to protect our members' uh, healthcare information. A lot of the ways that we do that is driving insights and visibility into our security program through our metrics that we uh, collect on a daily basis. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, next, Scott Schmoll, CISO of Merrick Bank and Cardworks. Scott? Or maybe, a, did we lose him? All right, well, let me move on to uh, Christine. Tornabeni from 2U. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, Christine Tornabeni, Senior Director of the Cyber Program at 2U. 2U is the parent company of edX, which is a leading global online learning platform. And our cybersecurity team supports over 46 million learners uh, with access to world-class education in partnership with over 230 colleges, universities, and companies. Great. Well, well, thank you, Christine. Scott, I think I, I skipped over you. I apologize. Um, can you can you hear us? Scott was having some audio problems. I suggest uh, oh, he's uh, disconnecting, cool. reconnecting. So why don't we go ahead and move forward and we'll get Scott back in when he comes. Sounds good. Thank you very much. So uh, what I'd like to do is just remind uh, especially guests who we are, who is the Cybersecurity Collaborative. The important message behind here, besides looking at all the things that we offer for, for members, is the fact that this organization is a collaborative organization. We're vendor, vendor neutral, 
And it's for the benefit of both the CISO and also for CISO staff. I make that uh, important point that uh, sometimes CISOs join this and they feel, well, oh, they're going to be taking more time from me and I don't have the time to do this. But basically, um, there are benefits for the CISO in terms of the, the uh, daily morning security report uh, where the CISO is never blindsided by going in and, and being aware of, uh, of, of a major security event. There's peer-to-peer -peer direct messaging. Uh, CISO asks the expert. But for CISO staff, um, the, really the benefit is the task forces that we're talking about where members having a particular expertise, and as you know, CISOs attend these as well, and uh, to talk about different security topics and share their experiences and best practices. This is what's different. We're not sharing what a vendor is telling us is, is the best thing to do in terms of improving security control. We're learning what members are actually doing. And uh, it's a way also for CISO uh, staff to get CPEs and, and to connect with their members. So what I'd like to do is briefly go through the topics we're gonna to cover today. Uh, we'll talk about the task force, the deliverables. I'm gonna go over those very briefly. There's, there's a lot of things that have come out of this. And again, members will have this information and those that are interested in joining uh, when you join can get it. Um, we'll talk about the definition and effectiveness criteria for a metric. Uh, and the key thing I wanna talk about is the metrics framework that we put together because we're using that going forward and building a, a tool and model for, for members. And we'll be doing that into the next year. Um, we'll then go into the data collection reporting tools. Obviously, what are members using to collect data and report it? It's very important to have a tool of some kind. Guidance for initiating a security metrics program. There are those that are still obviously looking for basic guidance on how you actually begin this thing. Um, and we've all experienced false starts. We've got some good guidance for you on that basis. Uh, lessons learned. Uh, what did we learn as a team that we can provide good guidance for you? Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about what we've uh, done at the collaborative in terms of task forces and, and content and our initiatives for next year. So let me stop here. And, and um, we've had quite uh, a large group of organizations participate on this team. This is probably the most attended team we've had. Um, I want to talk a little bit about task forces, and I want to maybe ask uh, some of my panelists here to uh, share what they got out of it specifically. Um, we get together on five or six security topics, sometimes more per year. For a period of eight to 10 weeks, uh, we organize discussions around those topics. Uh, could be metrics, uh, incident management, third party uh, security risk management. Uh, can we decide these as a group? And then we have eight week sessions. We share uh, visuals, our problems, our challenges and best practices um, in, in a very collaborative and honest setting, including false starts and things that people you know, had trouble with. And that's the value behind this. The value is, is collaboration. Uh, and also at the end of this, we produce deliverables for, for our members based upon the guidance that we've come up with. But let me just hear from a couple of members here. What, what did you get out of this? I mean, what is the value uh, of the task force and, and, and your sharing of information with your peers? Anyone want to chime in? I would say one of the big ones is it, it got us out of our bubble. Um, when we're in our organization, we're kind of in our, our little world and we kind of do the things that we do. Uh, getting into this collaborative and this task force, it kind of got us to see kind of things that maybe have matured or evolved or enhanced outside of our organization to see some of those best practices that we could potentially integrate into what we're doing. Uh, because the metrics is something where there's there's not a lot of hard written rules and it's always evolving, always changing. So you want to make sure that you're kind of uh, making sure you're keeping up with uh, some of the evolution in the space. Oh, great, Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? I would just yeah, add that. I just, oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead, Scott. Okay, I'll go. Uh, I 100% uh, agree with Jeff. Uh, and just to add to that, you know, many of us work in different industries, but I think it's fair to say, regardless of the industry that you work in, a lot of us experience some of the similar challenges. Um, so it's nice to be able to discuss those with the group and see how are we approaching those. Uh, so that was also a big helpful learning as well. Thank you, Christine. 
I think I'd, I'd add to that. It, it's it's nice not to have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of smart people out there that have done a lot of good things, and <laughs> our inclination is to build our own version of a wheel. And, and and you don't have to. You can you can take a lot of best practices from people that have already done this. You, you know, that's a, a thank you both, Christine and, and Scott and Jeff. I I would agree. Not inventing the wheel more and I mean we had to do that maybe 15 years ago, but. But now members, and we'll see this, we'll see this in terms of what Christine and Arnold have provided here. Uh, we, we can see some really good best practices and things that we can immediately adopt. And uh, that's the advantage of, of collaboration. The other thing too is everyone kind of uh, is concerned about uh, cross industry information. Hi, Brett. Um, but basically- I'm listening to it. Yeah, I'm listening to it. Yeah, okay. Um, Hopefully, this go on mute a second. Well, it's just he sent. No, we're just participants. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, hey, sir, go on mute. Go on mute, please. <laughs> All hey, right. Connor, Connor, force everybody mute, please. Uh, everybody other than Tom. They could take themselves off, but just uh, force okay. it. Okay. Thank you. That's why we have uh, Arlen. Uh, here to help us out here, keep it straight. So I do want to just say something about um, people worry about it being industry focused. Well, it's not my industry. I, I've seen uh, great ideas come from industries that have helped the financial services organizations, manufacturing organizations. Uh, you know, I think that having a cross sector of different industries uh, enriches the outcome in my in terms of what I've seen in these things. Um, so let's move on. Uh, let's talk about the deliverables that have come out of the task force. And uh, Arlen, I wanna, you know, you were a great contributor of, of uh, the urgency to treat cybersecurity as a risk, uh, as a business risk document, very rich, not only in metrics, but in good guidance uh, to help the CISO uh, address the board and providing useful metrics to the board. You wanna just comment on this for a few minutes? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first of all, uh, kind words, Tom. Uh, th this has been something that's been near and dear to my heart and that I've been talking uh, to for shucks, probably about 15 years now. Um, and where my original interest came from was what I was observing as challenges, not only in the wider industry of cybersecurity and, and, and security leadership, uh, but my personal challenges. Um, how do I go about, uh, first, of, uh, first of all, measuring a program? What does good look like? And how do you measure that? But then how do you express that in a way which is um, traceable, transparent, defendable uh, to executive leadership outside of security and technology that doesn't know um, the significance of a particular security control um, and being able to provide really a bridge to them that we can speak about uh, this thing called cybersecurity. Um, and for me, there were a, a, a number of lessons and we'll, we'll talk quite a bit about my perspective, but also very importantly, everybody else's perspective in the coming slides. Um, but one of the key things for me uh, that really got driven home over and over and over again is don't talk tech, mm. talk risk. Your CFO, your COO, your business executives, they are very well versed in the language of risk. They have no idea what IAM is or patch management or why you may need to deploy a firewall. And if you speak in that kind of terminology, I'll steal a quote from somebody else that I heard a while ago, you're talking dolphin speak. It's this really high pitched squeaking sound that really pe puts people off. They're going to tune you out. So don't talk dolphin. Don't talk talk uh, talk tech. Um, talk risk. Um, you know we're we're starting almost near the end here, um, but we're going to drill into all of this. 
But I really wanted to say, while I'm no longer in a publicly traded company and I no longer technically have a very specific uh, board of directors, um, you know, I essentially have people that I speak to that work in that regard. But whether you're in a LLP, a, a partnership, or you're in a publicly traded company, you're going to have this kind of board. You're going to have a leadership group. Um, and when I report out to them, um, and this is, I developed when working in publicly traded companies, you, you get about 15 minutes per quarter with the board, um, typically with the audit committee. And you have to be very tight and concise about your messaging. The bottom right hand uh, slide screenshot uh, of this slide really lays out the three sections that I have whenever I report to the board. These are no more than five pages, three sections. Of course, anything that hits the New York Times, ransomware, if you work in manufacturing and another manufacturing plant got hit with ransomware, or there was a major incident that hit CNN, uh, they're going to want to talk about it. They're not going to want to know all the technical details. They want to know what you are doing to ensure that organization isn't going to be victimized in the same way. Um, so, and of course, any key strategic initiatives uh, for the organization or uh, hot topics discussed in the past. Um, and then we get into scenarios. Um, and scenarios really are around um, what is it, um, like what are key things that you can tell a story about? I always talk about ransomware. Why? Because that's what is top of mind in all boards. Um, but there's also going to be other scenarios. Um, you know, what sort of, think of these as things which could have material risk within your organization, right? Things which could have significant bad things happening. Um, I don't know, um, maybe... Uh, you have to do a, uh, uh, you're, you're, I don't know, you're, you're acquiring, you've got a growth by acquisition strategy and you're acquiring new organizations. How are you set up in your organization, your security organization, to be able to be agile and respond to new acquisitions? Um, and then finally, again, we'll talk more about this in the next detail is risk posture. Let's actually go to the next slide and let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. I just um, wanted also to to mention two other uh, contributions you made in, in terms of spreadsheets, both uh, KRI and KPI metrics, key risk indicator metrics, key performance indicator metrics, and the fact that it's a very comprehensive set uh, where members can reference this uh, when they're when they're dealing with these two things. So, Arlen, and we can talk a little bit more about um, using the KRIs actually in a board presentation. We'll we'll get into that a little bit later, which is something that they would understand. But go ahead, Arlen. Just sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so actually, let me kind of pivot on that a little bit. Um, you know, there's a lot of material at your hands. Um, there's a, there's a spreadsheet of over 700 different met metrics that the team put together uh, that is available. Uh, for you to cherry pick from. Um, putting those sorts of tactical metrics in front of the board, don't do it, right? Um, the, uh, defining who your audience is first is the first question you're going to ask yourself. Who am I reporting to? What are they interested in? Most of my focus has been on board reporting. But again, in my over 25 plus years of experience, I've developed some collateral over time. And, the, and that collateral includes a variety of metrics uh, that can be used at any level within your organization. And then the team added on to those and added their perspective as well. So I guess the, 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 the side point here is, depending upon what you're looking for, are you looking to get more data or information or perspective about board reporting? Or are you looking on how to, what, you know, what are some of the things I should be looking at when doing a patch management or vulnerability management or security ops, um, uh, service uh, health uh, uh, evaluating perspective? It's there. Now, we're not going to get into all of how you build this up because there's a lot of perspectives and 
uh, drilling into each one of these, really each one of us can do a 90 minute conversation around our approach. So I'm gonna go very high level and then and make sure we get other people in to talk through this. Actually go back one slide if you would please. Sure. Um, I think for me using the NIST CSF, the cybersecurity framework uh, is a wonderful tool. It's a little outdated, it's, it hasn't been updated in a couple of years. Uh, there's a new uh, update coming out pretty soon, but it still represents uh, what I think is the best opportunity um, to express these types of high level um, uh, uh, views of your security posture. Now, people are going to talk about CMMI, they're going to talk about maturity scales one through five, and that's a perfectly fine. A lot of big four people, a lot of big four organizations do it. I tend to prefer to look at risk and risk posture. Um, I'm always looking at it from a perspective of how do I measure my current risk posture against my target risk posture? Mm -hmm. Where there is a difference that represents a gap, which gets uh, addressed through projects. You've got some screenshots here, and there's a, a bunch of tooling that will be available uh, to the membership of how to do that. That's what some of these screenshots are representing. Let's go to the next slide, please. Sure. I just wanted to comment. What what is really useful is the fact that you're a couple things that come out of this. Audience, know your audience. That that you're going to hear that over and over again. But adopt a framework. A framework is adopted here. That's the second thing. And the third thing is set targets. If you set a target and you can measure that, you know you can show progress and you can get, you know, the board. To understand that you are you, your goal is to improve your program. That's just a few observations, Arlen, out of out of what you put together. This is um, this is the detailed two hundred some odd uh, KPI metrics. I call them operational metrics, but you you've you've categorized them by by control in this case. And and uh, you know again, it's a great reference uh, for any member that wants to go in and. and uh, determine what they want to measure and there's guidance on how to do this. But anyway, Absolutely. You. no, that, that's a great plug. And think yeah. about it. This is a bottoms up, right? So you're building it from a technical yeah. or tactical. This is your bottoms up uh, tool set. And then there's also a top down perspective, which is more appropriate for board re reporting. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to uh, show another example from another company here. And that's Christine uh, from TU about different representations, uh, you know, visualizations of metric information that have been very useful uh, to uh, guide incident uh, management and, and uh, software assurance. Uh, so, Christine, I won't take your thunder away. You, you know more about this than I do, but it's an example of you presenting this initially to our team and getting the discussion going, so. Yeah, thanks, Tom. And um, so just to be clear, um, the things there, Arlen has supplied a great wealth of information that folks will have access to. And as part of the materials that this group has put together, um, there's also a, a small slide deck with a few visualizations, and here's two examples here, that can be used to inform and influence. So these are not, oh, we think there's, you know, a malicious actor in our network. We need to take action immediately. This is more kind of like, similar to what Arlen was saying, you're meeting with leadership in your organization or you're meeting with executive stakeholders. And what are the you know, two to five things that you wanna to present to either inform or influence a decision? Um, so for example, the incident and event time tracking, right? Maybe your team needs an additional headcount and you wanna use this as an example to show how many things the team is responding to. Um, so these are not technical detail, although depending on your audience, that might end up getting discussed. Um, but again, they're really taking some information that you have and making a easy to read visualization for someone that wouldn't be an expert in the area. And these are included in the materials that we have. Uh, back to you, Tom. You know, again, uh, I'll reiterate one more. Know, know your audience. And, and what are you asking or trying to tell your audience? What, it's almost like knowing what you want to get out of the meeting at the, by the end of the meeting, right? <laughs> and, 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 and managing and directing that. I think that's a good one. And these are 
two examples that have worked and we have more that you provided as well. Um, the last thing I know we're talking about deliverables, we, we do wanna talk about our, our, our concept, uh, which I think is very, very important because the framework kind of guides how we're gonna go forward. And hopefully it'll be very useful for those uh, attending the call today. Uh, we are putting out next week for members the Security Metrics Best Practices Guidance Document, which is based upon the materials that members are here uh, are listening to today. We are also putting out a, a an Excel Security Metrics Compendium, which I will talk about. This is still a few weeks away, and, and we're putting this together. But it's it's again using as Arlen said a very useful NIST CSF framework in categorizing. Uh, they don't call them controls per se, but sections, let's say, with uh, maybe control, control families. Uh, uh, control maturity, uh, a way to kind of measure that. And then within that, actually linking to the detailed metrics that we talked about, the operational metrics. Uh, and I'll show you how this, is, this works, basically. Um, there'll be a control maturity questionnaire uh, in the compendium. There's one developed now. Uh, from that, it will update the maturity uh, scorecard here, and then uh, you can click on any of these, uh, you know, operational metrics, and you can then get to, you know, a particular operational measurement, fishing training completion rate, for example. Now, the operational metrics, and um, I've used those effectively at the Federal Reserve, um, building their ISO programs and so forth. Um, are great ways to get organizations to uh, set a goal and, and improve their performance around that goal. And we'll talk about this particular example. But um, this is a dashboard that we're building and we'll talk about the levels. It actually deals with two of the three levels. Uh, we'll, we'll be working on the third one, but this, is, this will be available to members uh, early next year. Um, so anyway, let's talk a little bit, let's go back a little bit and talk, that was all about what we're delivering, but we, we learned a lot about what's important. Uh, maybe Jeff, just briefly take us through, I know we're, we're, we're running at the bottom of the hour, but yep. uh, what you would define and what makes a metric effective. And, and again, this presentation is available to everyone on the call here if you ask for it, so. Yeah, me mindful of time, run through this kind of quick. We saw a lot of good end results uh, on the last couple slides, but you have to start someplace. And really that's defining what you're trying to do, making sure what you're doing is effective with your program. A lot of programs I go in and build, uh, they had a pile of data and they would just take this data and they go, here's our data and they want to build metrics with it. And that's not the way to go. Um, at the end of the day, their metrics should drive decision-making. So you need to understand what decisions you're trying to make and then make sure you have the data available to support that. When you're really thinking through that, you also want to look at it as, what am I going to do with this data? Am I going to look at it over time? Um, is it going to be weekly, monthly, more frequently than that? What type of thresholds do I need? Uh, we saw the prior slide, you saw a lot of yet red, yellow, and green. Red, yellow, and greens are all over the place in every, every report you'll ever see, but what are those thresholds? So making sure your metrics can support those. So you know, hey, I'm doing good, I'm not doing good. Where do we need to improve, make investments, those types of things, which gets into kind of showing your status, um, showing your status of your metrics, how well they're performing, what actions you need to take on them. Action, action, actions is big. The effectiveness. Uh, the first three bullets over there are the big ones. You need a purpose. Don't just do metrics because you have data. Uh, again, a lot of programs I went to, they would just be doing metrics and they say, hey, I take these metrics to the board and they hate it. And I go, well, why are you taking that to them? They go, because I have the data for it. Not the way to go. Ask the questions. Ask the questions of your board, your leadership what they want to know so you can make sure that you're giving them metrics with a purpose. It's gotta be actionable. You gotta drive decisions, whether it's investments, decisions, uh, immediate responses, those types of things. Have to drive action with your metrics. These are all the underlying thoughts that you need to go into it. Again, don't start with your data and just see what you can make. Really take, uh, take the approach of what am I trying to do? What am I trying to accomplish? What type of decisions I'm trying to make? And then go through and see what type of data you need and stuff like that. And the last point I'll, I'll focus on here, um, I know it's been hit on a number of times, audience. Know your audience. Um, uh, security is abundant in operational data, but you need to take that operational data, those operational messages, messages and turn them up, uh, like Arlen was saying, into a risk metric. So people understand them. You start speaking the same language. Jeff, um, well said. I think, you know, taking these bullet points and that, 
Agreed. Um, I've seen people just put a catalog of stuff together and we're going to measure it all and uh, and nothing nothing happens. Know your audience, start with a few things and, and make that process work. We'll talk about that again, but I think I think you know purpose is it actionable and the audience are are key takeaways from this slide. Tom, real quick, uh, and and I, either I think this is for anybody appropriate on this slide or even on the next slide if we want to kick it off. We had a question from the audience that says, "How do you start really uh, driving that vocabulary of risk? How do you get that into uh, the speaking at your organization as opposed to technical or tactical?" Anybody want to take that? Well, that's a good question. Two points for that, uh, more than that. Um, yeah, anyone want to want to do that, or you know, that's a good question. So, are they saying you know, take you know, getting the security folks to think about it, everyone to think from the board perspective of risk? Was it specific? But I'll say all of the above. Okay. All right. Well, so let me let, let me start it out. I, I perfect. Scott, jump in. Um, I. I was a small business owner in part of my career, and I think in some ways that helped me think about things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, you have dollars and you got to spend them somewhere and you can spend them making money. You can spend them making customers happy or you can spend them on stuff you're not sure if it's going to pay you back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think sometimes we're on that not sure if it's going to pay you back end of those three questions. and. And you have to flip it and make it more relevant to that. Uh, you pay your car insurance because you don't want to be without a truck or a car if it gets in an accident. You, you invest in security because you don't want to be involved in, a, in an incident. And you have to be able to speak the language that, that, that uh, allows you to close risks. But I think the, the other flip side of that is you have to understand what the, what the risk uh, appetite is. They may be okay with uh, driving without insurance, <laughs> yeah, to a degree, in, in, in essence, and, and not, not that you want to, uh, that you'd support that with security or anything, but the, the idea of there is a level at which you, you don't want to invest more money because it won't give you the payback. And, but there's a, a level that's, that's necessary. Uh, and that's going to be a little bit different for every organization. Uh, depending on the organization's goals and and the leader's uh, threat uh, risk appetite, right? Yeah, yeah, great, and, Jeff. Uh, yeah. I want to hit on something you said, Arlen, a minute ago. I, I feel in my role as the metric lead is I need to take the cybersecurity risks, those operational risks, and translate those into our business risks. So yes, we might have a breach, something like that might happen. What does that mean on the business side? Is it a loss of customers? Is it reputational risk? Those types of things. So we need to really be able to shape that cybersecurity risk and the, the metrics that are supporting that and turn it into and tell the story around those business risks uh, and the outcomes of those events type happening. So that's where I see my role as, as a metrics lead is not necessarily just a cybersecurity person, but somebody that is that translator. I'm translating what those operational folks are saying with our senior leadership. Well, uh, those are great, Scott. Um, a, a great way to start it off, and from the pers you know perspective of, of of your role in business, and 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 to turn it around that way. So, um, it it sounds to me like it's a constant discussion, and uh, you know, again, uh, if you're in a regulated industry, you probably the discussion is already decided. <laughs> To a certain degree, um, if you're not, then it becomes a little bit more challenging. Um, but when you cast it in terms of a business, you have a better chance of making your case. It's not an easy thing to do, and it's probably one of the hardest things that CISOs have to do. Um, you know, because we all know about controls, and we, we've all grown up doing that. But putting it back to the business and do we want to accept the risk? Do they understand what it is and, and accepting it and, and so forth is, is very, very challenging. So thank you for your insights, both of you. Um, why don't we move on? Mark, um, I'm just gonna introduce Mark, who's going to um, sort of introduce our, our, our framework. And, and this is important for, for those in the collaborative and those seeking to join about how we're building our, continuing to build our program. So 
So Mark, anyway, uh, anything you want to comment on this? So yeah, this, this slide is, you know, is, is meant to be a visual, visualization of how to align your metrics reporting with your audience. Again, we keep talking about audience, know your audience. And that's what this slide really is, is showing. So if you look at level one, the metrics are operational and performance focused and your, your audience is, you know, cybersecurity management or a business function. And then as you move up the, uh, the, the pyramid here, you've got level two where your metrics should focus on measuring the effectiveness of your program. And, 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 it, and this is gonna align with, you know, your CISO or your senior management. And then as you move up to, to level three, your audience is the C-level boardroom um, and, and the metrics should be focused on, you know, addressing risk and, and maintaining compliance. These are the things that, you know, that audience is concerned with, right? So again, really simple here. The key takeaway is know your audience and then align those metrics with the, the needs of your audience. I um, thank you very much, Mark. It's, it's a, a great way. So, so again, here's, here's the, here, this is like, wow, it sounds like it's all a neat thing. The fact of the matter is, um, when you're looking at some of the KPIs, the operability controls, the graphs we showed you, ideally that information on how you're doing should move up to your security program. And the security program is a way of, of balancing or reducing risk. You know, it's, it's, it, you know how much you know, our controls actually reduce a little risk and that's all fit in neatly. And I don't know what everyone's experience is, but, but Generally, there are huge disconnects between each level in terms of the data. Oftentimes, you know, it requires intervention to determine control maturity, which is a different set of questions from some of the control operabilities. And then when you talk about risk, sometimes it, you know, your your control maturity and control program doesn't doesn't neatly match with that. Um, we're we're trying to make these integrations more meaningful over time. Um, and it's going to take us some time to do it. But we, but again, the model shows different audiences and different views. But I think there's some, some, uh, some uh, you know, direct benefits of looking at it this way and how the bottom feeds the top. But would you agree with the disconnects a little bit sometimes? I mean, when you get up to the board, you're maybe not pulling all, again, you're not showing all the uh, graphs to the board because they wouldn't understand it. But but there seems to be some disconnects naturally right now in the in the state of security metrics, if I can use that broadly. Does, that, does everyone agree with that, or you can tell me I'm wrong? <laughs> no, hundred hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, so so we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna you know maybe it's we're chasing windmills, but we're gonna continue to push for that integration and making that transition sm smoother over the next year and beyond, hopefully. But thank you, Mark, for doing that. Um, I'm going to rush through the next few slides. I know, Scott, I, I got you on it. The next slides are breaking down um, each each level. Um, so we'll start with the bottom and it, it, who's the audience, what are the criteria, and what's a representation example. So we have the framework. Now we have examples of metrics that fit in that framework. And operation, you know, the operational metrics we have a ton of, as I mentioned here. Um, but Scott, I, I'd say the audience is, is the operations, IT, business units. It's not at the senior management. And uh, here's the representation example that I've presented before of, of setting a goal and measuring, in this case, it's the fishing training completing rate. Everyone probably measures that. I've seen some people present it to the board. You know, probably that's if you're going to present something that they'd understand more about, but still we have some issues with it. Um, anything? Scott, on the operational side that you might want to add, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to get us move us along here a little bit, so. Well, I, th I think some of the key things here is that when, when we talked a little bit earlier about some of the uh, the metrics that are available to us through the, the uh, materials that we can provide, this is where those 700 come in, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> and and it's not 700 to everyone, even of these audiences that, you know, we talk about, the, you know, the, the employees or a particular department or team is going to have different ones than even like IT management or whatever. You have to pick the right ones, the ones that matter, the ones that focus them on action, uh, ones that uh, I like to think of these in terms of uh, a behavior that's desired or a goal that's necessary. Well and said. You really got to tack, tack that to those. And if you do that well, 
then those goals can be meaningful. They can focus people on things that you want done and that need to be done uh, versus just work or things that you're already doing fine. And you know, if you only put up the five metrics that you're doing great on, you're not going to drive improvement on the things that need to be focused on. Scott, I, that's well said, and thank you for, for bringing that out uh, from this rather dense slide. I also say another example here that might is uh, if you're having trouble uh, you know, applying, everyone wants to apply critical patches within 30 days. It's even, well, that's, that's kind of, <laughs> these days you want to do them probably sooner than that. But let's say you have an SLA 30 days to do that and you're not you're not doing that and it's not a security organization, maybe an IT organization, a desktop organization, a server organization. Having, a, a, again, a, a focused metric for that organization with a goal to meet that SLA over a period of time, like rather than knee-jerk reaction, they didn't meet it one month and uh, whack-a-mole and then they meet it the next month and they don't get set a, set a, set a time so they can get their processes in place and focus on it this is this is where this level one metric becomes very useful and again you're not going to take that metric we've said and necessarily throw it to the board and, and say you know because uh, they may not understand what it's all about and they probably don't want to know that you're having you know those problems with it that you know in, in that in that manner so um, thank you, Scott. And the next, we'll just continue on, um, moving up to level two, uh, what we saw in the model where it's the CISO, auditors, senior management, you're really kind of looking at your overall security program. And, and Scott, we, you know, maturity, uh, CMM is, is, is always measured that way, but I, I think it is difficult to measure. We're, 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 we're doing that um, in the collaborative and we're doing it in a rather um, different way. We're looking at effectiveness and coverage and things like that, but it is very difficult to do. And this is where the disconnect is because the operational metrics don't necessarily feed into this. But, um, but again, um, I've seen the CISO presenting it to senior management is more of an overall security program aligned to some standard. Um, any other thoughts on this one, Scott? I think you know we're, we we have beat and we will continue to beat the drum of the audience, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is a certain audience and it's a certain level of detail. I've even seen a lot of these things where we do the CSF or the you know, you know pick pick your framework, and not only is it at the high level, but then it it shows all the subcategories. And what are you supposed to do with all of those? <laughs> red dots you know it's like there you got to kind of back to some of the comments we had before it's it, you want it to be actionable and there's something you're trying to drive by reporting these and if there's too many things there then what is what's the message what, what are somebody supposed to look at what are you supposed to do because of it and and you need to think about that well you again you, you, the nail on the head so when you're presenting something like this, tell the story. You know, as you said, a lot of red, yellow, and green dots aren't going to mean something. But if you can then maybe explain that we're weak in asset management and we're, and, and again, look at your audience. You may not be presenting it to a board, but you may be presenting it to auditors or, see, you know, some other senior management. Um, you know, you can, you can, then break out where we are a weak in asset management and then even then show your operational graphs to say we're only covering 10 percent of our assets and in inventory something like that but i think you're right it's it's uh what's your audience what's your purpose and then what actions do you want to drive on it and i i think that's pervasive in all these representations this i'm just going to move on as another example i mean there are different ways you can measure control effectiveness and coverage and we're doing that but um, and to try to determine where you want to improve your controls. Um, I'm going to move on to the level three area and have Arlen talk about this, um, which is at the CEO boardroom uh, audit committee of the board level. And uh, maybe, maybe Ar Arlen, you can talk about uh, sure. the criteria and, and, uh, and tell everyone about your six rules. There are two on there that... Uh, you know, we'll we'll kind of wake the audience up a little bit. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the curveball five and six. Um, 
it, it, but but they're 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 tightly related. These things are all related. And, and, and listen, we're not we're not going to be able to drill into all of these. And I gave you a preview already to this in the next slide earlier in the deck. Um, you know, number one, talk business uh, risk, not technical metrics. Uh, again, that depends on who you're speaking to. Um, my focus is always at that executive level, um, at that board level. And again, they don't they don't understand. They don't want to talk about technical metrics. And if they try to talk about technical metrics, it, it, take that as a flag that they're trying really hard, hard to understand your world, but they don't know what the right questions are to ask. And it's your job to educate them. Um, so de develop scenarios. These are the things that we already spoke about already. Industry standard framework. Um, you know, I think Mark, uh, uh, perhaps it was Jeff, I forget, uh, really leaned in on this, and I, I think very uh, wonderfully. Um, listen, y'all are really smart, and the group is almost always smarter, right? So um, industry standard frameworks, choose your flavor. I love uh, NIST 853, NIST CSF. I think these are wonderful control frameworks. They've been vetted. They've been tested. It's just the same thing. Don't create your own algorithm. Don't create your own framework. Use good practice frameworks. Um, the other third parties validate risk. I think that's pretty uh, um, uh, uh, self-explanatory. Um, you know, it, it just it's a blind spot thing. You're going to have blind spots. So bring in other people to help you out there and make sure you don't have any major blind spots. Underfunding is your fault. Uh, boy, this is uh, that. And number six, never report to a CIO. Not exactly a, 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 a metrics conversation, uh, but let me just do that to see how well I blow up uh, the chat. Uh, what I mean by underfunding is your fault. That's where I'm going to pause. Um, your job you're a leader, you're running, uh, if you're a CISO, right? We're gonna have people that are not CISOs on this call. It's not your fault, it's a CISO's fault, it's your boss's fault. He or her is not having the right conversations. Um, they're likely having conversation around, you know, I need to do this project or that project or talking technical, uh, having a technical conversation as opposed to having a risk-based conversation. Let's go to the next slide, please. Yeah, let's. Uh, I, we're we're kind of at. Uh, two, we're running super uh, late here. I'll move through this, but this I, I, six I, seconds here. All right. Yes, so this is a risk-based okay. conversation. Yeah, exactly. Individual on the chat asked, "How do I justify funding for a SOC?" Well, you have it within this, right? So if you're measuring yourself against CSF, 138 categories, uh, subcategories. Pardon me. Underneath these five functions, if you are doing poorly in detect function. Because you don't have a proper SOC, that's going to show up here. So that's how you back into these more technical or tactical conversations through this higher level risk lens. Back to you, Doug. Thank you. And uh, lastly, just as another example, um, and this was actually used in an ISO um, uh, audit uh, doing a risk assessment. Again, I know I know how it is. Uh, by the way, to pull questions up, uh, please answer it while we continue on. I'm going to run through this so we can get to a little bit of the panel discussion and and the end parts. Here's it's, this is just a real example where you can measure risk points and if you're using a fair model of dollars and show how you're improving over time as another means of uh, describing risk. Um, and uh, I'm going to pass on a discussion of this, uh, Jeff. We'll just say. Uh, members, we do talk about tools that we use. One of the benefit of being together is, is just to see which tools work and how they work. And if members are having difficulty implementing them, they get advice from other members. I think the key point behind this it usually all starts with Excel and PowerPoint and probably should because um, you really need to establish a base of, of a few metrics and build from there. Um, and then this you'll all get a copy of this. This is detailed guidance on how you would initiate a program. Uh, and again, um, we say a couple of things on this. this. You know, what's your audience? What is the purpose? Start with a few metrics and then and then build from there. And, and uh, so that you're using them, taking action on them, people understand them and they accept your program. And then you can continue to add. Do not try to design an entire program from start. 
with every possible metric you, you use, you'll never get you'll never get done with that. Um, but anyway, this this slide's available. Uh, let me just uh, uh, for folks. All right, see if I can move along here. Let's talk about a few minutes. Lessons learned. Know your audience. Okay, um, <laughs> trying to drive them into action. Any any more we want to say on this? I think we've we've talked about this from the start to finish because it is so important. Um, in other words, you've got to put yourselves in the shoes of the person you're presenting to. Any other comments on this from the team? Or I guess we've said it all there. Um, what are typical obstacles associated with initiating and, and initiating a program? Did any of you run into anything typically that? Data quality, data, data quality. Um, it, it's hard to build a program. It's hard to automate a program if yeah. you don't have good data and consistent data. So I would say that's one of the biggest things uh, is data quality on my side. Education and context. You're yep. going to have to educate your leaders. What does this mean? Why are you representing it this way? And there's a couple of questions on the chat, right? How do we how do we do that? How do you do that education? And it really does uh, begin with uh, um, you coming up with the methodology and you being uh, um, the expert and then educating them. Now, listen, I've got a couple of tools which I lean on heavily. If anybody's interested, just send me a note. I'll share what those are. Great, Arlen, thank you. Um, how, has, how has your program been successful? How does it need to be improved? We talked about some of the things that are addressed, you know, answered in the previous question, I guess, but uh, um, any, any thoughts on, on sort of the challenges you have going forward and things you're working on? Okay. Always um, being improved. <laughs> 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 are you are you uh <laughs> we'll think about that one yeah. um have you found them useful to engaging organizations outside of your or security organization i mean has it been effective I, I guess the question is that have you found it effective to get either hr you know to, uh, or the uh identity access group to you know respond to people employees who left to terminate them you know their their access in a timely manner things like that has, has it has it actually been useful to driving change in those organizations it drives visibility and you can have discussions around it uh so like phishing is a great example if you're sending out doing phishing tests across the organization you can go have discussions with their leadership around their performance and those types of things. So it, it gives you some, you can't just say, oh, y'all need to do better. You have data to back that up. You need to do better because this is how you performed. Um, so it just enables a conversation and you can monitor and track that performance over time. Okay. Okay. Well, it, right. It provides a, a vehicle for conversing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that that's important. Otherwise, how do you drive that? You just sort of showing frustration that something's not being done without actually showing that, that it isn't being done and the importance of trying to get it done. Okay, good. Um, all right, any other comments on this before we move on? So um, we're gonna go to the Q and A's. I just wanna say uh, we've had a number of task forces that are completed. Uh, privacy and data regionalizations, caps, security metrics, and benchmarking is starting next year. We have a security monitoring questionnaire. If you're interested in filling that out and getting a free copy, uh, uh, please send a note uh, to the email I'll provide. And uh, we've got a lot of content that members have uh, put into the uh, our member portal. As, as a member, you, you go in and you can access all this content. These are some of the task forces that we're uh, reviewing with the executive committee that where interest has been expressed, obviously, this team. Uh, moving on, uh, what, we're, what we'll do on this team is build the model. Uh, we, we'll probably bring in a tool to make the visualizations a little easier and access for, uh, for members. We have a good uh, uh, team that can actually survey organizations and we'll, we'll put some benchmarks in there as well. Operational technology security, risk methodologies, Arlen, you brought that out, is, is really key in organizations as the FAIR model and others. 
how do you use them? How do you make them work? They can be, we talk about the language of risk, that can be a good uh, way to uh, foster those discussions. Uh, M&A security policies, we haven't done that to basic team, INAM and so forth. So these are the, these are the teams that we're presenting. Um, any other questions here that we have that we, we have a few minutes on? Um, let's see. Arlen, yeah, they want your contact information. I'll put it on. Yeah, there, there's hot, there, there's the, the, the conversation in the chat is going on hot and furious. Uh, a couple <laughs> I'm not people, looking at that. I'll let you do it. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of people said it was a great presentation. Thank you to those. A couple of people said it was terrible. I deleted those comments. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. No, nobody said that. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> um, you know, there's, 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 a, a number of different conversations going on here, and I know we've got just a couple minutes left, but you know, one of them was uh, about how to change your reporting structure. Hmm. Um, and if um, there, it, 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 uh, it, so it's almost like two different veins here. One is how do I educate my leadership? Um, and if they're not listening, then what are my next steps? Boy, that last one's the hardest one. Uh, I, I, if anybody wants to try to make career advice, um, I'll, I'm not going to try to jump into that one, uh, but suggest maybe that's a, a hazard to your career to work in that organization that is not interested in understanding risks of cybersecurity. Um, but, um, you know, changing that org, uh, it, that's a leadership. It almost always has to be driven by the top down. It rarely can you generate that anywhere from the bottom up. Um, so that would be my comment. Either they get it or they don't, it's gonna take them time. Um, and oftentimes when they bring in, it, oftentimes when their first CISO, it's not gonna be somebody from the inside. They're almost always gonna go from the outside to bring in the first CISO as, as a report that's not reporting to the CIO. <laughs> I love this chat stuff. I Meantime, M T T E G O. Meantime, to eyes glass over. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> that's I, always actually, fun. That's, that's a very dangerous good. place. That's, that's why we threw in those. You know, hey, it's your fault if you don't get your funding, and uh, you know, just to kind of make sure that people we go. I know there's a lot, to, to, uh, and people may have lost over on some of this, but well, this is a great thing about having. This is an example of the community. <laughs> this is what you get when you're in the community. Uh, we learned from and, the and, and well the done. I mean, really, thank you, folks, for the comments and, and the questions and, and being honest. It just goes to show you really are concerned. Let me just state here for the, the again, plugging the collaborative. I know we have large companies on here, but we have SMBs on here, and the CISOs like uh, you know Arlen and Scott and others are all willing to uh, to help uh, the smaller companies. We may not have the resources that the larger companies have, um, improve their security practices. It is a goal of CISOs to help each other. That's what we're here for. Um, you know, not to sell, but to help, even though I'm selling you to, to join here. Just remind everyone, CPE credit. If you're like me, I gotta get a whole bunch done before the end of the year. Uh, members are gonna get the guidance and the workbook uh, guidance next week, workbook over the next few weeks. Anyone who wants this, please contact membership at cyberleadersunite.com. Um, we've got questions for participants in the chat box and the poll, poll questions. We thank you for answering that. We got two minutes left. Any other questions? Uh, I guess the chat's closed down. Um, I saw one question, Tom, in there that was, where do I get started? I get information overload and data overload. Um, just ahead on that, start at the top. If you know what people want to see, you can really get the population metrics into something that's more reasonable and manageable. So start at the top, work your way down, make sure that you're getting data just for what you need so the, the data doesn't overwhelm you. So that's where I'd say if you're trying to get started and you're kind of overwhelmed with just data everywhere and, and you're kind of at the bottom. Yeah, yeah that's that, if, as you pick a framework, um, yep. don't go to the 700 level at first. Start at the top level, yeah, and then go down one level, and then go down another level as, as you have the appetite in the in the 100%. team focus. Yeah, that's a that's a great both both those are great great ideas. Just start with, you know then then you can you can expand the you know the bottom. Even though one feeds the other, it yep. it, it is a good place to start. Definitely, it isn't about 
you would never start by just getting all the metrics and trying to organize them. You, you've got to get people to use them and believe in them in, in the audience, right? I mean, you, you still have to sell that. It's not just coming up with a metric. It's the visualization. It's the use in the audience. And because there's so much, and then, of course, the tool you're using, the people on access. So there's so much to put together. It's better to start with a few and then gain your credibility and then expand. That's been my experience. I think the experience of others as well. Um, everyone's different. Well, I just want to thank all my panelists here for really enriching this discussion. And hopefully everyone's eyes didn't glaze over some of the slides. Yes, maybe, but you can you can get them. There's some good content on it. Um, but thank you everyone for spending an hour with us. Again, my panelists, I wish you all happy holidays, safe, and a wonderful 2023. We hope for those uh, who are interested in, uh, in learning more about us, you will contact us and we'll certainly uh, share uh, some materials with you and and uh, look forward to having you join. So thanks everyone. Take thank care. Bye-bye now. Thank you.